My book, Happy Campers, Nine Summer Camp Secrets for Raising Kids Who Become Thriving Adults, is not just the story of my own camp, but is the story of many camps all over the world who are promoting the social and emotional growth of kids through intentional strategies. This bonus episode is a recording of one of my Happy Campers interviews with a camp director from one of the day and resident camps who were in my series that was originally aired on Facebook Live and is also available in video form on my website at sunshine-parenting.com. Enjoy this conversation with a camp director who runs an amazing program. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. We are live in this Happy Campers interview, and um, we're ha- I'm having so much fun with this interview series. I'm talking with camp directors from both day and resident camps, and we're talking about the amazing social and emotional growth and character traits that kids develop at summer camp. And today I have with me Clay Kolvig from Kolvig Silver Camps. Welcome, Clay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So, Clay, um, why don't you start? Well, first of all, if anybody was waiting for us to start, just once again, we had some minor technical uh, issues, which seems to happen a lot with camp directors. And I think especially with Clay, who's a real backpacker, outdoorsy guy, we're hoping that he's not going to accidentally touch something on his device and lose him. But if he does, we'll come back. So anyway, Clay, we know that you're, um, that technology was not what you were most interested in. What is it that has, uh, like, tell us about yourself and what you're interested in and how you got involved in camp. Well, I kind of uh, grew up in camp. My parents uh, started our program in 1969 when I was three. So some some number between 40 and 50 summers I've been uh, at camp. Um, so it's always been, it's always been a part of my life. It's kind of it's kind of who I am, though I took time to discover if there were, or explore if there were other things that I needed to do. Did some traveling abroad and got a physics degree and studied architecture uh, as for a master's. And, uh, kind of brought brought all those, things, tied all those things together when I decided to come back. So I've been the director here for uh, 20 years now. So wait, go back on that. You were you um, got your degree in architecture? I didn't even know that. My master's is in architecture. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's probably helpful for fixing things and creating new things at camp. I'm guessing. I, uh, in answer to my mother's question, what are you going to do with your architecture degree? When I when I wanted to come back to camp, I said I'm going to design a great camp. And you and you have done that. Okay, so Clay, just a reminder, you're going to need to speak up because so that we can for sure hear you <laughs> in this interview really well. Um, all right, so Clay, so how long has Colvig Silver Camps been around and where are you located? Um, we're going into, uh, in 2020, we're going, uh, celebrating our 50th summer. And um, we are in Durango, Colorado, Southwest Colorado. Southwest corner, so pretty remote. We're not on the way to uh, anywhere, um, which is uh, makes it difficult to get to. But once you're here, there's nobody here, which is great. With the amount of time we spent in the backcountry, yeah. So I know that that's a big focus of your program. Why don't you explain the ages of the kids that come to your program, how long your sessions are, and what you know what kinds of stuff the kids do at Colvig. Um, we've got a, a full age range, 7 to 17. We break them up into smaller uh, age ranges that um, <clears throat> that they'll be doing programming with primarily. Everybody mixes together um, where we eat, and um, that's, a, that's a fun aspect of camp is doing things with all of the different age groups. But primarily they'll be programming with uh, their age group, which is usually a, a three-year range, uh, sometimes two. And... The youngest campers, the second through fourth graders completed, they come for two weeks. Uh, and the older campers are for four weeks. And the length of time is something we believe um, strongly in, uh, in terms of reaching the bigger goals at camp. Uh, I feel like the shorter you go, the more activity driven it becomes. The longer you go, the more 
people um, relation on the trip and growth. There's, there's a lot more personal growth in those longer trips. Yes, um, definitely. And also you have, you do a lot of out camp things. So like for the older kids, just as an example, if they're there for four weeks, how much of that time are they like out on trails or kind of out of camp doing, exploring the wilderness? As they get older, they spend more time out of camp. Um, so the oldest group is actually out the whole time. They're out for 26 days. Um, that's a 10th and 11th grade group. And it's kind of an outward bound parallel. Um, but with most campers coming in already, the hard skills are already there. So we don't have to make it as curriculum driven. We can make it more leadership um, and interpersonal driven, uh, that type of experience. So they'll, they'll actually take turns being leader of the day, navigator of the day, um, all the different aspects of group travel. It's a smaller group of eight to 10, the two guides, two instructors. And they're out the whole time. We meet them every six or seven days to support them. And it's nice where we are. The big, a big advantage for us with the backcountry part of our program is that um, we have this more larger natural forest um, in Colorado and uh, with a lot of wilderness area in it. Um, and we spend a lot of time in the mountains right here. It's where it camps about, at about 8,000 feet. Mm. Um, so we're, we're kind of in the, in the green area, but we also have quick access to the canyons in Utah too. So takes a few hours to get to, a couple hours to get to the canyons in Utah as well. So this huge range of um, ecological diversity to explore um, when we take advantage of that with these, with these trips. Um, so moving down a step, the 8th and ninth grade completed group would be out in four weeks. They would be out on three, four, or five day trip every week. Okay, so um, wait, I need, first of all, Clay, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm worried because I want to make sure that everyone can hear you. So maybe just get a little closer <laughs> so we can hear hear you well as you describe it. Okay, so so just going back, your ages are 7 to 17, and the younger kids come for two weeks, and the older kids come for four weeks. And what's that? What's the break where they start coming for four weeks? What age is that? Following fifth grade. Okay. And do, well, like, I'm sure, I'm certain you have kids starting at every age. Is there any age that's like too late to start at Colvig or can kids come in at 11, 12, 13, 14, any age? Any, any age. Um, we're a smaller, we're on the smaller size. Um, and with our, the way our program is structured, which is very flexible and free flowing, we don't have a rigorous structure. Counselors are bringing new ideas. There, there are time periods for activities, but they're bringing new ideas and creating new um, opportunity for campers every year so it kind of evolves um, and then with that smaller size and individualizing the experience we, we kind of get our return campers used to the idea that every every year is new there's new there are new people there are new activities new staff and that first three four days of camp is um, really intentional with um, creating that new community for the year so it's it's common for us not to be able to tell that a camper hasn't been a camp before at any age Mm. Eighth, and ninth, eighth and ninth grade is, is when the campers are most worried about joining a new social group. Um, <clears throat> and the, they're, they're the most you know, kind of welcoming then as well. And I often can't, there'll be campers that are here, a group of campers that have been here for seven years, and somebody new will come in, and within three days I can't tell that they haven't been a part of that group. Mm, that's wonderful. But, how, so what, how, what's your total number of campers there at any time? At one time, it's 100 to 125. Okay. And so the kids probably know everybody. Do they get to know pretty much everybody in camp pretty well? That's that's a big goal, and that's kind of what our size... We're, we're growing some right now, um, but our size is going to be capped by when, um, where the limitations of the experience happen, mm. um, not the beds. So I kind of think of it as the, at the point where I don't know everybody's name and know what's going on with them in camp. Yeah, that's pretty good. And you have a lot of um, second generation and longtime families, I know, that just love your program. What is it that they say are the benefits or what their ch children gain from coming to Colvig? It's, it's funny. They don't, it's hard for them to, to nail down specifics um, often, but they, they say, and this is why it's hard for them to talk about camp or for anybody to talk about camp and for people to believe you because you're using these, these 
these kind of deeper, big, profound statements that they find uh, a little unbelievable. Um, and it's hard, so it's hard to, to kind of get them to really listen to the specifics. So they, they, they st- the parents are saying things like, um, as, a, as a baseline, um, a lot of them say that this is the best thing that they do for their kids. Every, everything that they're doing for their development, this is the best thing that they do for their kids. Um, they talk about things being bigger, uh, but in a, in a broader sense, um, their lives are bigger. It's really when my parents said, uh, said it. Um, a parent last year said, we talked a lot about going to special, people go to special camps a lot, and she said, and her daughter has had as well, she said specialty camps are great for learning about your, about a specialty, specialized skill. Um, Colvig is about, or Colvig is good for your soul. Mm, oh, I love that. It's good for your soul. That's what all of our kids need is more of that sort of kind of getting back to themselves. And I'm sure just the, all the things that you do out in nature are so helpful for kids as they just kind of get regrouped and refreshed after their busy year at school. Um, tell me, Clay, also, I know you have a really big horse program. What is, what is that like? And what do kids do there? It's, um, they'll have, they'll have the option to ride maybe, maybe 10 times over the summer, uh, depending on the age group. There are different age groups that are more interested in it. Um, but we have this, we're, we're on 600 acres and we're surrounded mm-hmm. uh, by the San Juan National Forest, which is another um, 60,000 acres, something like that. Um, 600,000 600, <laughs> um, So we can we can hike and ride right out of right out of camp here. Um, so it's it, it's an opportunity to, you know, that's another way of. Um, it's there there are a lot of specialized skills that happen in, in any camp. It's, and there's that aspect of it, but it's uh, it's kind of it's it's another way of connecting and connecting. I've heard you use the word connecting a lot, and that's that's kind of the core of of everything we do. Um, developing there's the skill development, there's the, the personal development. Um, for us, we talk a lot about it, the, the kind of three realms: the, the, our, our inner world, um, our social world, and people around us, and the natural world. Good camp program is going to um, help you help you become more aware of, connect with, um, be a steward of, um, feel more a part of all three of those things, understand those th- those aspects of your life better, and that's going to lead to um, more confidence and comfort with and capability with yourself, and, uh, and just kind of a, a general. That's how I would define happiness. If you, if you, if we say that we want our kids to be happy, that's mm. exactly, that's, that's that seems like that's the core of what will lead to um, happiness and success. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I think I just want to make sure that parents heard when you said that kids go horseback riding. 10 times over a session. I mean, just so you know, Clay, don't be humble about that because there's a lot of camps um, where we have horses and the kids horseback ride once or twice over a session. So that's a pretty intense equestrian program. Do you do mostly, is it Western riding? What kind of riding do you do? And is it, um, do you go out on trails? Do you do ring work? What What do you do in your horse program? It's, uh, it's I guess it's not a, it's not a time frame that allows for a, a specific um, progression of of skills, like like a, a list of skills. You know, we do we ride western, um, and most of it's trail riding. We do some ring work um, to to get used to get used to the horses and how to handle the horses and um, and communicating with the horse. Um, but a lot of it's just kind of up in the forest around us, exploring in that way doing that I guess I think of it as a, a lot of our activities we don't do that much but maybe that's that's uh, uh, 10 is a lot in it in in out there at the spectrum but all of our because we were out of camp so much um, kind of more learning this living skills 
mm-hmm. um, any specific camp activities. And because our activities are changing all the time too. I mean, horseback riding is a consistent, um, but then we've got the counselors in, in creating the program, the counselors have to, if they're bringing something new to camp, they have to write it up um, using a, a, a matrix of things that we want to see accomplished in any activity. We'll take a look at it, and once they've done that, they can go. Um, we had a guy who grew up in Japan who was a camper, came back on staff, and in, in Japan, he had, he had trained as a sumo wrestler. So he came to camp and he had a three-day activity where he taught his eighth and ninth graders um, a lot of the ritual and practice of sumo wrestling and they had a tournament at the end and they even learned how to tie the, the diaper with the camp blanket. Oh my gosh, that probably was so much fun and so memorable. And oh my gosh, what boy doesn't want to wrestle? That sounds awesome. The, the girls are just as into it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess true. Yeah, I shouldn't, shouldn't be sexist about that. That's so true. Um, okay, that sounds really cool and what a unique program. And I guess your size allows you to do that and to allow for that creativity yeah. and sort of letting the kids follow their interests and the counselors as well, getting to really be leaders and establish some fun new programs. What are some of the other uh, activities that have come up in recent years or things that you expect might be going on this summer again? Well, there's those, those kinds of things that you expect at camp that, that are going to happen. Um, we've been developing our mountain bike riding program, so, so we've got a, Durango's kind of a mountain biking center. Um, uh, horses, there's, there are different target sports that, that uh, campers can do. We do a lot of rock climbing. The rock climbing mm. is, is a great, um, we have a wall, and then uh, we have a lot of natural rock around us so we can climb to. Rock climbing is great accomplishment activity because anybody can do it and there's no there may be the top of a wall or the top of a rock but but we talk about the top being relative to what your top is so there's a you can challenge yourself uh, every every step of the way and then feel the, feel that success um, there's a big we have an art barn there's a big creative aspect uh, of camp uh, so there's and those things kind of evolve too, depending on the, that specialist. Our counselors offer all the activities, um, so, which they can do with a three to one ratio. Our counselors are also all trip leaders because we spend so much time out of camp, so that it's consistent with the staff and the campers. Um, but we do have some specialists, the art barn coordinator, the wranglers, the climate coordinator. We started a target sports coordinator, um, just because that's another um, easily, uh, it's a skill where you can see success quickly. Um, and then, and then, and we have a, a small pond swimming hole, swimming hole that uh, people enjoy. Monkey bridge, and, um, kayaking on it, that kind of thing. Um, and then, from from those things, then there there's just uh, anything is possible with that three to one staff ratio, and the staff enjoying the, the idea that they get to create programming. Um, it can be you know, you didgeridoo making. They made a Quidditch field a few years ago um, with, the, with the hoops. Apparently, there are, there are muggle rules for Quidditch. Uh, you can play. Um, uh, we also have these kind of uh, theme days that change every year, like a Jumanji Day or a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Day, where everybody in camp gets together and uh, mix, mix ages and do, do some big, crazy adventure all day. And then uh, we want to develop the spiritual side too. So there's some, some quiet time, some reflection time, processing, um, some ritual times, and then a lot of this happens on the trips as well. Mm. Process really is a big part of camp. You have to process everything for it to really settle in. And with that time frame, four weeks, you have time to process, which is something that's hard to find um, back in the quote, real world. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I'm guessing I know the answer to this question, but uh, what kind of screens do your campers have with them during camp? None. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not that we're anti-tech. Um, they're going to be on screens when they go home. What we're looking for is to have, uh, let them explore, provide a place where they can explore authentic relationships and communication, and hopefully take that back to their screens so that 
they don't fall into some of the more negative traps and mm-hmm. actually hopefully uh, add positive attributes to their social interactions for the people who didn't get to go to camp. Sure, absolutely. Um, so you've kind of covered a lot of things. I'm wondering if a parent is watching and listening about Colvig Silver Camps and sort of the program, what kinds of kids do you think you benefit most? Or if someone is a new family, um, what are some, like, what's it like for someone coming for the first time? Um, you mentioned that everyone's pretty welcoming, but what um, what kind of kid do you think thrives most? Is it kids who are really wanting to do that ad- outdoor adventure thing. Like for the older kids, I'm thinking that this is a really good alternative to something like an Outward Bound because you also have that home base and kind of the family and traditional camp aspect in addition to the kind of adventure outdoor thing. Is that is that accurate? That that aspect of it, I would agree with it. There's, there's the family, the camp feel to um, that and, a, and a, a, a stronger base. That you, that you don't find with th- those other programs are great for when you get older. Uh, we find we have campers who come here, do our program, and then do those and um, come back and uh, say they pretty consistently now they say that we were as rigorous, but we also had this family feel. Mm. Um, in in answer to the type of the type of camper, I think what we're trying to do always because we individualize it is we're always trying to um, explore diversity of experience but that that will hopefully uh, someday include diversity of culture uh, or, or more of a diversity of culture but a lot of cultures haven't discovered camp yet um, but if we're set up to to already to to celebrate differences in diversity of experience than any diversity or, uh, can come into play in camp and be comfortable and, and has. Um, so we, and, and another, kind of another dichotomy that you run into a lot is people wonder like, is a, is camp for extroverts uh, or introverts or both? And we want to be addressing uh, all opportunity. I, I, I was an introvert, I probably am an introvert, um, but I was able to be I was able to learn how to be other things at camp um, where you don't have that opportunity um, to explore those things in many, in many arenas outside of camp um, anymore. Um, and in terms of new people coming, um, I had a camper, first year camper at the end of the term tell me once that um, now it felt like home. Mm. Now camp felt yeah. like home. So it is really important to be, to be welcoming. We're not going to, we're not going to progress the whole group, which means we're not going to progress individually if we don't have everyone uh, along for the ride. Sure. Yeah. It seems like a really warm and welcoming culture. So I don't think parents need to worry that even if their child is, you know, on the quiet side, not really aware of what outdoor activities they like, they can still come and have, I'm sure it might even be more transformational for those kids who aren't used to doing any of these things to be experiencing them for the first time. That's what I imagine. What do you think? It, it, it is that you see a lot more, a lot more transition for the campers that have been here before it settles in more though. They don't, you know, we have people coming through camp who, because of the, the friends they make here, depth of that friendship they may not back home they may they may not go outside much or or be that person who would would do a 26-day backpack but they come do it um, they come do pathfinding because of this set of friends and, and as they progress you know as they progress through they begin to they, they tell me this a lot they begin to appreciate more and more what's going on in the, in the back country doing these harder things challenging themselves um, as they as they kind of as they become more, more aware and critical of them, uh, of themselves and, and where they're headed, not critical, but um, aware, so. like self-aware and sort of self-aware. like knowing themselves. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and trying to define their search, they begin to see as they get older, they begin to see more and more about um, why this is valuable for them. And then we have staff coming back and uh, I had a staff person at the beginning of the summer one time um, in introductions, they're asked to tell, tell everybody why they're here and uh, this that person uh, said um, because i've realized through my camp experience i know what's good for me 
That's really beautiful. You know, um, Clay, we have a live uh, viewer, Stephanie McDonald, who is a huge fan of you and Colvig. And she says that um, Colvig Silver Camp is the antidote to technology and screens. We chose Kelvig Silver Camps for their focus on connecting with nature and each other. My kiddo misses Floppy. <laughs> Who's Floppy? <laughs> I, 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 the names changed for the end. Sometimes they take care of the animals. I think that's a horse. Okay, that's what I was guessing. And I we, mean, we rent, we rent some of the horses, so yeah, okay, fun. yeah. And then she also said, cannot say enough good things about Clay and Colvig Silver Camp. So that's really awesome just to hear from, um, you know, from directly from your families. And I know you hear a lot from families about just the huge impact your program is having on these life changing really for, for these kids who are coming through your program. And I'm guessing for many of them, some of this is the very first time and the only time that they've had this chance to be really, really deep out in nature. Um, one thing I want to make sure people heard is about your rock climbing program, because many kids have been to like a rock climbing gym or climbed on a wall. And I know you have a wall, but you actually are climbing on real rock. So it's like real rock climbing and something that is a sport that many kids I know who come to your camp probably continue to pursue outside of Colvig. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah. And kind of in a, in a, in a general sense, just being outside once they discover it. Mm. We, we, I run into, to, kids constantly that don't even tell me that they're here but that uh, end up in college in Colorado or uh, somewhere further out away from home that, that where they can be outside um, rock climbing is a, is a good example they, they, and being on a natural rock it's a lot different than being on, on a wall um, just because there's a whole tactile um, experience to it that that's uh, that you don't get as much of on a wall because all the holds are um, kind of fake. Um, yeah. That, just that whole, it's kind of that whole, it, the one parent said it as, um, he, he's, we were talking, he said, I look at these pictures of them at camp and there's something different. And I, I'm, I'm analyzing this and I realized that at camp they're free. Mm. And, and we talked about what that, what that meant. It's free to be, Free to explore new things, freedom from technology, um, freedom from negative social constructs or influences. Um, we kind of create this artificial, idealized world that we want them to be able to um, take advantage of, and then they have, they have to go back to the the outside world and kind of make their way. Um, and that's that aspect of it is one of the things that the parents appreciate most about camp is that they're they're free here, they're and they're core of it is they're free to be themselves to explore themselves mm. and they come back with more confidence to go you know to go do that study abroad or to try that new activity uh, or, or club though they've never done that before um, or to really focus on something that they've been wanting to and be able to let go of um, other um, things that they were holding on to that, that now don't seem as important yeah, I honestly like what you just said is the whole reason I'm doing this series, because I think I really want parents to understand that it's not just the experience of camp is not just the two weeks or the four weeks or however long the kids are there. It is the changes that happen in them are life impacting. I mean, like you said, these kids who experience the outdoors and being off their screens and just connecting so closely with this community can take that out into the world and create that kind of experience for others back in the world. So I just, I can't even state enough how important it is that what you're doing at Colvig is, it's so much more than just a summer camp. I always want to like clarify that, that people sometimes who don't know camp People who don't know camp or have never been themselves or sent their child don't understand. They think it's just like another activity, like right. everything else they do. And it's so much more than that. And I think you you said that really well when you talked about that, that freedom, that coming back to themselves, that leaving different than they arrived. I mean, that's just, that's the magic of this thing, right? For kids a lot, it's the freedom to, to just to play and be kids. Yeah. 
you know, the younger, the younger you go, the more important that is. And then you gear yeah. active and you gear the program for the next steps that they're taking. But, but even that, you know, if they, if they see a counselor who's, who's, who's all out dressed up, face painted, um, you know, their whole body's blue, this kind of stuff that if, this, if they see that this counselor can let go, this person that it's not that it's not their parents. It's a different relationship. It's, um, it's someone closer in, in age that they can look up to. They know cares about them, but they have a different kind of connection with if they see them modeling that ability to let go and have fun. Um, it, if the, the all, all these things uh, address the, the issues that we, that, that we, or, or that the, the world out there is seeing anxiety and um well i guess a lot of a lot of it is anxiety based but um it's why that's why you continue to see um the the these kind of larger deeper uh, named therapists coming back to camp realizing that this is what's going on um yes we're getting mentioned in like every book in fact Yesterday for my podcast, I interviewed um, Lisa Damore, who's written two books. One was Untangled, and the one coming out now is called Under Pressure. And they're both about raising teenage girls. Much of the stuff is also applicable to boys, but she has specialized in her practice with girls. And in both of her books, she mentioned camp. And in our interview yesterday, she talked about her um, older daughter who goes to a camp in Colorado. And has a, an ongoing relationship with all her friends at camp where they really support each other all year. So like you said, here she is knowing and knowing the importance of camp and sending her own daughter for a long time each summer just because she knows the benefit. So you're right. People are catching on that some of the things that have been around for a long time, like camp, have become even more valuable now because this is more of a unique experience than it was when you think about 50 years ago when Colvig started, a lot more kids were playing outside and riding their own horses and doing all this stuff. And now very few kids are. So really it's kind of amazing that what we do and we've always known it's great now is becoming on a bigger, you know, it's becoming understood that, and the research is backing that this is a, a really important experience for kids. That's what's really nice is now, now we, we, we use all this big, like, love camp, like, this big love camp language with people, and they don't hear it. But now the research is backing it up better. And, yeah. and I was talking to a, a parent last year who kind of came in, a father came in at the end of the slideshow, and um, his mother went to camp, the, the mother went to camp, his wife went to camp. So um, he was, to, to some degree, he was just along for the ride, but he's, he was quickly learning the value of this through his three kids. And we were talking about what you said, what used to happen, were these opportunities to, to socialize, to set goals uh, and, tr and try and figure yourself out how to reach them to negotiate social situations um, within a group without, uh, without interference from the adults, the experts. And, um, and we, we kind of, what, where the, at the end of the conversation was kind of a realization that that camp is the new neighborhood mm. because those opportunities aren't there. You, you where you used to he was he was talking about what he used to do in his neighborhood um, that allowed him to learn these things um, mm -hmm. on his own to some degree. Yeah, absolutely. I, I um I've been comparing camps to villages, which is the same idea that um, they're finding these blue zones in the world where people live the longest. And everyone was trying to research whether it was the Mediterranean diet or whatever. Turns out that the only thing that really is the most highly predictive of a long life is relationships and connection. And the reason that these communities, these blue zones, people are smoking. They're like 106 years old and they're smoking, but they have like neighbors visiting them. Not that I want to promote unhealthy activity. <laughs> However, it's just an interesting thing that we are so focused for ourselves and our kids on all these health things um, like food and exercise when the best thing for our health is community. And so camp is 
it's like the old community of yesteryear and village or whatever. So I, I've been doing thinking a lot about how much camp has in common with the small village or the old neighborhood or you know Mayberry. Remember the remember our May what was what was that show with the, okay. Andy Griffith? Yeah. And I mean, you know, we all just like, there's a country music song that I love, which I miss Mayberry, you know, sitting on the porch. And I think of camp that way. We're all saying hi to each other. It's like, it's just like a little community neighborhood. It's so great. Hey, Clay, what else do you want to share about Colvick that I have forgotten to ask you about? Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you want to make sure people know? Uh, I think we've hit the kind of the, the main things that that I want, that I wanted to, in terms of the value of camp in general, and then the, the things that um, distinguish us. Um, I, I guess I wanted to note we're we're talking about these things. We know about them. Um, we've seen the research. Um, for anybody who's listening, who uh, as as a parent um, who's kind of learning about camp, dig into these things a little bit and see see what this see why people talk about it in in the terms that they do about their camp experience and then um i, I always just throw this challenge out there because it's it's such a critical the things that we do at camp are so critical to, to children's development i throw this challenge out to people to to try and talk to somebody who doesn't get camp who doesn't know or who who says i can't you know that's too long or that's too far away um Ask them what they want for their kids, and then answer them. And, and in a lot of cases, um, camp is going to provide those things um, to a more significant degree than a lot of the other opportunities out there. Well, I think just between you and me, I'd say better than all the other opportunities out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, trying to certain, be. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to be diplomatic, but honestly. Yeah. Um, for the most part, what's happening at camp is and the growth and development that's happening for kids socially and emotionally is far greater than what happens at school or, you know, on in other settings. So it's really it's really quite awesome. Well, Clay, you are the real deal. We've been friends for a long time and I will will reflect upon seeing you know, the one photo you posted in the month of September, I think, which was you out on a backpacking trip by yourself after camp being out in the wilderness. So of, you know, of the many camp professionals I know, and I know quite a few, I think of you as just really, I mean, you are the role model for those campers that you take out in the wilderness. You do it yourself. You're so good at it. You're so experienced and a hundred percent parents should trust trust you with with their kids and sending them out into the wilderness and just discovering nature and discovering themselves. And so I'm just so happy that we met each other. And I'm so happy that your program is still around and providing the same awesome experience that you have for so many years. So thanks so much for being on the Happy Campers interview series, Clay. Thank you, Audrey. I always like talking about camp. <laughs> Me too. We'll do it again soon. Okay, take care. Okay, thanks, Audrey. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me for this Happy Campers Interview bonus podcast episode. If you're interested in learning more about how you can bring home some of the magic of summer camp, I'd love for you to pick up a copy of my book, Happy Campers, Nine Summer Camp Secrets for Raising Kids Who Become Thriving Adults. It's available for pre-order now and comes out on May 7th. And you can find more information about it on my website, by going to happycampersbook.com. To thank you for pre-ordering the book, I have a couple of fun freebies. The first of which is the first chapter, Camp Secret Number One, Connection Comes First. I'll also send you an invitation to join my private Facebook group that's called the Happy Campers Book Club, where we'll be sharing resources, videos, and conversation about raising kids who become thriving adults. To access these freebies, simply pre-order your copy of the book and then fill out the form at happycampersbook.com. Together, we can spread the happiness of summer camp to the whole world. <laughs>